I will send you a copy of the recording, so if you have to, if you want to look it over again, you'll probably get a lot out of it just kind of reviewing the contents. And I'm going to put these in the back of the room. And then um, if you guys ever miss, just, um, I, think, I think Renata will send out the PDFs for these documents too, so that you'll have them, okay? Cool. All right, so how did it go this week with uh, all the things that we worked on? We worked on chords, right? What was the goal for the chords? To learn the lines, to practice the ones that were bold. Uh, yeah, that's right. The five chords that were bold. And how fast were you, are you trying to get to, not necessarily by this week, but like eventually, how fast do you want to be able to change them? Half second in between each chord. If you can do that, then you can play a thousand songs, I, and I mean it. I could seriously print you off a thousand songs and you could play through them with the, with the left hand. And your right hand, what was your right hand trying to accomplish? Yeah, and so we actually learned an eight stroke rhythm yesterday, meaning eight hand motions, right? And the rhythm sounded like this. Right? If you ever want to practice your rhythm playing in that train, what you can do, <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll embarrass yourself, but you can take your, your, um, your left elbow and attach it to, kind of put it right next to your side, hold your hand like this, and just try to strum. Bum, 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 ba -da -da, bum, 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 ba -da -da. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, I know that's all that is. Yeah, good job, man. Okay, so um, so we we got into that good stuff, and uh, hopefully you tried some of the songs and stuff like that. But today we're moving on. We're gonna try some new stuff. Go to page one, and I want to show you something very very cool that every guitarist should have. What is a capo? This is a capo right here. You guys ever notice this thing? I bought one today. Huh? I bought one today. Did you? Yeah, Good. I saw everybody had one. Good. Yeah. Everyone needs one of them. Yeah. How you doing? We have a sheet right on the back for you. Yep. Yep. Okay. Everybody should buy a capo because they're very cheap unless they got you to buy one of the expensive ones. How much? That was 20 bucks. Is that expensive? Good job. No, no. That's a normal one. Okay. And I mean... They might well, not want a cheap, cheap one, but... Right. Yeah. Okay, so look at this one. You guys see this one? Yeah. Just like that. It's very easy. Now, what does this thing do? This is important. In, that, in probably three months from now, if you just keep kind of just progressing a little bit, you guys will be able to play a lot of songs. And you might try to sing with them, or you might be playing for someone else who wants to sing. Now... A lot of times when you play a song, okay, let's let's see what we got here. Let's see let's see what some of the songs that we have here. Amazing grace. good for my voice. It's not too high, it's not too low. So that would work pretty fine for me. Some of the girls, if you tried singing that, you might find like it's a little low or it's a little high or something like that. Now listen, what's kind of cool is if it was a little bit low, what you could do is you could actually put your capo on. Now listen what happens. I want to go way up here. Same chord, I'm playing chords exactly the same way, but I'm pretending now that this, where this capo is, is like this line. Mm. Okay? So that would be the number one. Exactly. Guitar playing. What does it sound? Does it sound different? Yeah. 
Let's keep going. Let's keep going up. Let's go way up. It's got a different vibe, right? Totally different feel. I think this sounds almost like a ukulele when you go up that high. Yeah. It's pretty. It's really, it's really nice. Let's look at the next two songs on page five and six. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only that we see. So I'm gonna go right to the chorus. So darling, darling, stay here by. that I dig it because I like the way that this sounds so high right I like the key that it is in for my voice because it doesn't feel like I have to like go too high it just feels like it kind of sits right in there for my voice um, but I like this it sounds like a like that pretty almost like lullaby ish sound right so I recommend you grab this and it can be very useful um, anybody sing in here anybody sing who said a little bit who said a little bit? A little bit. Okay, let's, uh, you know the song Stand By Me? Let's go ahead and sing this, and I want to give an example of, uh, this might not be the perfect key for you, or it might not be the perfect place to play this, so we'll try it out, and then if it's not the perfect place, we'll try raising it, maybe we'll find something that's better for you, okay? Ready? too low. Guess what? <clears throat> Capo is right here. I'm going to go to this fourth fret. Let's try this. Okay, which one do you like better? You could not do that without a capo. You see? This is why the capo is such a great thing. And honestly, I would be lost without this thing. This is my baby. I, every 100% of the time I play, I will have that thing right there. And if I, if I get to the, like a show or something and I don't have that, guess what? I'm gonna go find a guitar center and I'm gonna go get one, because I'm not gonna play without it. It's that important, every single time I play. Okay, so you wanna grab one, they're cheap, they're like 15 bucks, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 bucks. If you buy it on Amazon, it's probably really cheap. But listen, don't, don't let them talk you into buying a 25, or 30, or 40, or $50 one. I've had people come back buying a 50 or $60 one. I'm like, dude, why did you do that? I mean, it was a cool looking capo, but this is perfect. <laughs> this has lasted like 10 years so far, probably. Okay? Pass it around just so you guys can look at it. Don't go for anything, any weird things. Just get that one, one just like that, okay? If you want to take a picture of it, you can take a picture of it. When you play the song, is there like one place to put the picture? Nope. There's not. There's not. It just will. Uh, as we go on, um, probably next week we'll be able to start to talk about music theory. And when we talk about music theory, you're going to understand what's exactly happening as you go up too. It'll you'll you'll know it logically. You know, it'll be very good. He's got one already, right? Yeah, just, you know, I got the same brand. He's got the same brand. Okay. I mean, not the same cool. brand. Cool. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> got that? Cool. Uh, I'll it up here real quick. Now, watch how it works, guys. So, I put it on the top, okay? You don't want to put it underneath, because if you put it underneath, then your hand can be, like, hitting this part, right? So, I like to put it from the top, and... The place to put it is kind of close to one of the bars. Not touching the bar, and not like far, like you see like this is far away from the bar, and you want to go close to the bar, and that's going to sound really nice. Okay? With that said, uh, we're going to move on.
I'm gonna assume that you've practiced these chords a little bit. Uh, can we just run them real quick? Why don't you just run them all? Let's try the A minor. Everybody try the A minor. Give it a strum. And uh, how many strings are you allowed to strum? Five. Five, you gotta skip the first one, right? Not the E minor, the A minor. This one right here. Like that, here's the E minor. But we're gonna do the A minor. Okay, let's go to the, let's go to the C, but before you do that, put your hand on the A minor, and then I want you to change only one finger. See that? Because you have two anchor fingers, don't you? Okay, so that will help your speed if you get used to that change between A minor, C, A minor, C. So try that real quick. Go back and forth, you know, about 10 times real quick. Get used to it. Hello. Yeah, if if she doesn't see your name on that, then she's gonna then she will know that you missed it and then she'll send you the PDF. And, and the class video. And the class video as well. Okay, so uh, you see how the, there's that anchor finger. You wanna always get used to the anchor fingers. Now let's go to the um, let's go to the D. D is in dog. D major. Remember the left key is what? Uh, the major chords, right? And the right key has a they have or the right column has little M's, is that right? And the little M's, what do they mean? Minor. If you want to write that in, you can. Minor are sad sounding chords. They're, they're kind of like a little bit darker sounding chords. And most songs mix the, the left column and the right column, the major chords and the minor chords. They mix them together. Okay? So we have our D major. Oh, you need that packet? Uh, there's one in the back. Sorry about that. Okay, very, very nice. Um, flip flop your chord upside down. Was, I think it was like a little bit upside downish, like this. Yeah. And I'm going to walk around real quick and I'm going to look at each person's hands. So who's going to be right? Looking at this chair. Let's go ahead and let's move on. Um, e minor to the G, are there anchor fingers? Yes or no? One finger, right? E minor. Oh, sorry. Not the E major, that's the E major. You gotta do the E minor is this one right here. See this? Yeah, see, so there's an anchor finger, right? Boom, E minor, G. E minor, G. E minor, G. Um, there's a packet right on the back there. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay, so you see the anchor fingers. That will save you time when you're trying to get these chord changes pretty quickly. Now, um, everybody's going to have a different amount of time to practice each week. So some of you guys will be able to move quickly. Other people, you have a busy week or you've been traveling, you don't have much time to practice. That's okay. Just take some time, right? Just be patient and just make sure you're getting better than you were last week, okay? And it will add up. So now let's go to page three. I just want to do a quick review on the eight stroke rhythm. This is the most important rhythm that you'll ever learn in your life. I still use it all the time, all the time. Many, 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 many songs that you hear on the radio that you want to play, you're going to use this rhythm for, okay? So this is going to be, uh, if we were to play, let's say an E minor, our two, two finger chord. Okay, 
get faster and faster and faster at that? How fast did you need to do? Were you trying to do it? What was the goal? Eight, eight, eight rotations. Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ooh, anyone want to show off a little bit? Did anyone get it? Want to try it? All right, let's hear it, man. Show off. That's good. That, that's a less spoken like a true guitarist. A true lead guitarist. you got to learn to play some solos, man. He's the guy that, that like, doesn't mind like stepping up to the front of the stage and doing some guitar solos. Cool. Nice. Good stuff. Sounds good, man. That was fast. That's, fast, that's faster than 15 seconds, I think. So you're doing great. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so now, uh, did you have a chance to play any, try any of the songs at all, anybody? Yeah? Yeah, some of you guys? Okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead and let's go to finger picking and pick picking today. This is so, so pretty. Uh, last week you learned the foundation, okay? Honestly, if you can just keep going with those chord changes, you're gonna be in really good shape. Get those chord chains to a half second per chord. Get that rhythm down. You're gonna be fantastic. And I would say go start searching out songs. Find some, some artists that you like, look up the songs, and print off the chord charts. Start to do it, because there's tons. Have you tried it? I, yeah, I found a lot of songs that I like. Can I get the rhythm that they do? Yeah. And that's the most important thing for me. Yeah. Having the chords to get the rhythm that they're playing. Yeah. Um, it's, what's the trick? It's, okay, so, that, so the trick is, the truth of the matter is, at the level that you're at right now, you may figure out the chords in a song, but you may not be able to figure out the rhythm because it might be a little complicated. It might be something like this, okay? It might be something like a rhythm like this, like. Okay, this rhythm is one that we're gonna learn probably within the next, probably next week. Okay? It's a 16 stroke rhythm. That means it doesn't just take eight hand motions to play, it takes 16 hand motions to play. So it's a little bit long, it's twice as long. Beautiful rhythm, and it's, you know, you'll get it. It just takes a little bit of practice, okay? Uh, but we'll get into that, okay? And I have some rhythm exercises that we'll have to learn eventually, but eventually what you want to do is you'll want to learn, you'll want to train your ear to listen to a song and figure out what rhythm is being played. You know what I mean? So that you can start to like copy it. Okay? But I, we, we don't expect you to do that right now. Okay? We're in the beginner class. This is week two. So, you know, I don't know what we need to do all that yet. Okay? Let's talk about finger picking and pick picking. Um, now, look, uh, do you guys remember the names of the strings? Do you remember how to remember the names of the strings? There was a little, uh, little sentence, right? Eddie, Ace, Dynamite, Good, Bye, Eddie. And this is your first week, right? Cool, and so you might want to write that down. A way to remember the, the, the string names. And I believe you were late last time, right? And so I don't know if you heard that one. Eddie, Eight, Dynamite, Good, Bye, Eddie. Did you know that already? Yeah. Okay, cool. And were you here last week? Yeah. This is your first week? Okay, cool. So what we're doing is we are um, trying to remember the names of the strings. This is the E string. This is the A string, the D string, the G, the B, and the E. So how do you remember the names of those strings? Eddie, eight, dynamite, good, by Eddie, okay? So um, with that said, you're gonna see right here the list of the strings, right? See that? The string names on the side. That bottom E, is that gonna be the fat E or the skinny E? Eddie, A, Dynamite, Good, by Eddie. So it's going to be the fat E. The skinny E is going to be the top one. So if you want to write that down, you can write fat next to that E and then skinny next to that E. And so basically we're going to be hitting all the time. And it's going to sound like this. Ready? Listen to this.
Okay? So, what we're going to do is take these three fingers and I want you to put them on the bottom three strings. This is not hard. Put them on the bottom three strings and have the fatty part of your finger facing up. Do you see this? Not like this, not on an angle. Have the fatty part of your finger facing exactly up and your thumb is going to be responsible for the top string. Okay, now I'm going to walk around and I'll show you on the video as well. Okay, you see this? My ring finger is responsible for the bottom string. My middle finger is responsible from the second to bottom string. My pointer finger is responsible for the third to bottom string. Okay, got that? All right, now I'm going to tell you the pattern. Actually, you should look at the pattern. So the first note, we're looking from left to right. The first black dot is on the fat E string, isn't it? So that's saying pluck that with your thumb, and we're going to pluck it down. Now, anytime these bottom three strings hit, they're going to be plucking up towards my head. Okay? So we're going to go this, and then we're going to hit the B string. So our middle finger's got to pluck up. Then we have to hit the G string, which is our pointer finger. And then what do we do? The bottom string with our ring finger. repeat it over and over and over and over again. Now listen, if you put your, your um, just some oomph into it, I think you could probably get to be this fast by next week. I think some of you could be this fast today in this class, in the next five minutes, if you really put your effort into it. I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna watch you guys, okay? I'm gonna make sure you guys got it done.
Okay, guys, that was solid. That was solid. Okay, now, this is something that you can use in basically any song that you want to play. So you're going to have choices, artistic choices, if you want to play a song strumming or if you want to play a song finger picking, right? So I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, let's go to a song. Let's go to. Um, Go so stand by me because we pretty much have been talking about that one. I'm going to actually go up here. See how that's very different than me strumming? Totally different vibe. What, what feel do you get from that? How, what emotion is it compared to strumming? Gentle. Super soothing, soft. gentle, soft. Yeah, and so you want to be able to do that, right? As an artist, you want to be able to express different songs different ways. That's why, you know, when you go on YouTube and you see remixes of songs, sometimes they're very cool, sometimes they're better than the original, right? Jimi Hendrix's version of All Along the Watchtower was much better than Bob Dylan's version of All Along the Watchtower, right? So you have a right to kind of reinterpret tunes. And so I think that, you know, being able to strum is important. I think finger picking is important. Now, as I'm playing through this, what do you notice about my thumb? Some of you guys who are up close might have noticed something about my thumb, but watch this. Keep watching. This one, this one. <laughs> right, that's right. I switched, didn't I? Yeah. Okay, what do you think the logic was behind me switching the thumb? Any ideas? Oh, well, I didn't see when you switched it. But I mean, it's 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 that's it, that's it. Okay, so what, what happens is, uh, if, the, if, if the, so, the chord, if I'm allowed to play the top string for the chord, my thumb can hit the top string, right? But with the C chord, okay, and, and I'm sorry for a couple of you guys who it's your first week here, I'll, I'll, I can even talk to you after class and kind of make sure that you got the chords down and stuff like that. So you'll, I'll, I'll help you guys to get that done. With the C chord, I'm not allowed to strum that top string. Oh, mm, right? you're only allowed to, to, to pull out the, uh, the top string of the chord, right? Right, so the thumb will go to that, the highest string that I'm allowed to strum for that you know, particular chord. So when I hit the C, my thumb's gonna be on the second string down, right? That's the A string. See that? My thumb's on the second string. When I go to the D chord, what do I do? The string? Yeah, what I call the third. The third. <laughs> I don't wanna confuse you, but. See that? Back to G, thumb goes to the top. But these three fingers are always going to be on the bottom. Okay? Okay, so that sounds, sounds awesome. So you guys um, probably could try strumming through or... Actually, when you, you play in the G chord for two balls, yeah, how many uh, notes are you hitting? That is a great question. So we do need to talk about that. Okay? Um, so an eight-stroke rhythm, how many strokes are there? Eight. So when I look on page five, and I see it saying G, and by the way, for the people who have been here for the first time, um, your chord chart is going to be found on page two. That shows you how to play all of the chords, okay? But because it's our second week, we're on page five, and we're looking at a song, and the first chord is G and it says two next to it. That means you need to play two 
eight stroke rhythm. How many strums can you play on the G? 16, 16 right? Because it's basically eight stroke rhythm times two. So that means when you're doing, when you're playing your G, how many plucks are you allowed to have? For a one pattern, but you need to have 16 plucks all together. You need to have the same as you would if you were strumming. So basically, because a pattern of pick picking, how many how many plucks are there in one pattern? Four. 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 So you need to do four rotations of it. Okay. So basically, when you're playing these songs, if you're doing pick picking, what do you need to do the num to the numbers? Oh, okay. You've got to yeah. double them. Okay. So if if you're on a G and it says two, what do you do? You can do four pick picking rotations, right? So watch me. So when the night has come, there's my four. Now E minor, how many am I gonna do? Now you can you can push yourself hard with this finger picking stuff. If you don't push yourself, your your speed is going to just gradually 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 go up over the next month, okay? I don't think we need to wait that long. I'd say this week, seriously, this week just when you practice it just say in 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 your head just be like I'm going to go double the speed that I'm doing that I'm doing right now. I'm just going to like double my speed right now. And that aggressive push is going to speed you up a lot faster. I know because I've been teaching, I've taught hundreds and hundreds of students, right? And I know that when we mentally say, I'm going to double my speed right now, you, you, you speed up so much quicker than if you just kind of gradually, gradually do it. Okay? So, can you double the speed of changing chords the same way? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see by next week. Maybe you can. I mean, but I know that it matters if you have this aggressive push in your mind and you just say, you know what, I'm just going to go faster, I'm going to go faster, you know? It, it makes you speed up a lot faster. I had a, yeah, I, I, I've tested students before. I've actually given them goals that were ridiculous in one-on-one -on -one lessons. I tested this one girl, she was in a PhD program, and so I knew she was a hard worker. And I just, I just gave her this goal that in my mind I was like, this is so ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I don't even know if it's humanly possible. She came back the next week and nailed it. Like shot, like cr crazy goal. And um, so it's possible. It's really interesting how it works. And, and when I teach kids, I used to teach a lot more kids than I teach all adults, but when I used to teach kids, a lot of times they don't even know how fast they're supposed to go. And so if I said, okay, just do it twice as fast now, they're like, okay. <laughs> just do it, you know, because there's no, they don't have like these mental roadblocks a lot of times. So just do that with yourself, you know, just, just go for the speed. Okay, now, that's, that's called finger picking. You can do something very similar with a pick. Okay, now listen to this. between doing the pick picking and the finger picking it's louder isn't it listen to, listen to the difference here's 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 my pick picking with my fingers same exact strength see that now look back at the thing the finger picking um, page on page seven. Do you notice that I put the dots on one edge of the line? You notice that? It's not right on the line, it's like on the edge of the line. It's either on top of the line or on the bottom of the line, right? That actually tells you which direction you're gonna approach the, the string when you're pick picking, okay? So when you hit the first note, um, you're gonna go, you're gonna go down. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. 
if I had a choice to do either finger picking or pick picking, I would do pick picking any day of the week because it's louder and it's versatile. Because what you can do is I can go right from rhythm playing. What's this? So I can go right from strumming into pick picking, but I cannot do that if I'm you know, strumming with a pick and then I want to go to finger picking. Then I got to drop the pick and then I have to go like that. And then when it's time to go strumming again, then I have to go grab it. It's a hassle. And I think it sounds better with a pick. I think it's, it's louder and brighter and clearer, right, with a pick. So let's take a second and let's try this out with a pick, okay? So we're gonna pluck down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and I'll do it for the video so you guys can see it. So down, up, down, up. I'll get, I'll, I think I have another one. Does anyone need to, borrow, need to borrow a pick right now? Anyone need to borrow a pick? just nailed it so that was really good really really good which one do you like better finger picking or pick picking finger picking okay I think uh, I think in the long run though I think you're gonna like the pick picking 
it really sounds nice being able to flow between rhythm playing and pick picking. Really nice. So you want to work on both of them, okay? Both of them sound very pretty. And so what is a good way to practice it? Just practice and do it. <laughs> well, we could set a goal like we have been doing. Maybe we can set a goal. Should we do that? Maybe set like a goal for how fast you can do it eight times in a row. Who's doing that? Oh, you're doing that. That was good. Do that again and let's time you and let's set that as a goal for the class. <laughs> okay? Someone have a timer? My phone is recording it for you guys, so I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, that's some good speed. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, sounds really nice. And when you start changing the chords too, it just sounds so, so cool. Okay, ready? Uh, let's do it eight times in a row. In marks, get set, go. There. Seven seconds? Okay, let's do, let's shoot for eight times in eight seconds. Eight times, so once per second. Yeah, once per second. That's a good smooth, you know, smooth uh, speed. And then I would say, I would say go ahead and pick one of these songs and try them, you know? Give it a shot. Start one of the songs. Don't forget though, that those numbers next to the chords, those are for the eight stroke rhythms. So you have to double it. That's exactly right. Okay. So now, I'm gonna, I, I, that was fun. You guys agree that was fun? Yeah. Okay, now we have to do something that's not fun. We have to do bar chords. Bar chords are notorious for being the most hated thing you will ever learn in your entire career on the guitar. Truthfully, I hate them more than anything. I don't hate them as much as I used to. So we're just gonna do a little intro to them today because we have 50, about 15 minutes left and then next week we'll dive more into them. But I want you to under, start to understand how they work. Okay. Now the first thing that we should do is we should learn that there are 12 different note names. This is really important. So go to page eight, okay? Notes have names, and they're usually a letter, right? And so you, you have to memorize this week the order of the note names, okay? So um, if we play this first string open, you guys remember the, the top string? What's the name of that? E. E. Eddie eight dynamite goodbye, Eddie. E, Eddie, A, eight. D, dynamite, G, good, B, by, E, Eddie. Eddie, A, dynamite, good, by, Eddie. That's a good way to remember it. Now, the first string, the top string, I mean, is called E. And so, what I want you to do is take your pens, and above this string right here, I want you to write E. Okay? Above this string right here, write E. Got it? Okay, so now, if I play this note, listen to this note. That is what note? E. Now if I take my finger and put it on the first fret, I've gone up what musicians call a half step. Basically, anytime when you go to a neighboring fret, that's called a half step. Got that? Oh, okay. If I go from open to here, that's called a half step. When I go from here, half step, another half step. But if I skip one, if I go from here, take a guess what that's called, whole step. From here to here, one half step, okay? So now, the note names go like this. When you play this string open, it's E, then it goes F, then what's the second fret? You see that it says F and it has a number sign, right? Or a tic-tac-toe sign? That means sharp, okay? And it's, it is utterly critical 
that you understand the idea of sharps and the note names because you, you, you will be stunted and, and we won't be able to hit up all the cool things that we want to get into the, next, the rest of this month. So if you notice, it kind of follows the alphabet. E, F, G, but it doesn't go to H, right? There's no H in music. It starts all over at the beginning. It goes back to A, and then what? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's how it works. And every note has a sharp. Can you see that? F, and then F has a sharp, right? F sharp. G, you see G? You see G sharp, right? You see A, A sharp. But there are two notes that do not have sharps. Can you see them? Look for them. B and E. So if anyone asks you, what are, the, what are the two notes that don't have sharps? You just think of a bumblebee. A picture of a bumblebee flying around right now. A cartoon bumblebee, because that's gonna just get stuck in your head, so you'll never forget it. Everything has a sharp, except bumblebee. So the B and the E. So it's just a stupid way to remember, right? Obviously, it has two E's in bubble. Like, you know, you, you, you get the idea. Okay? So what we're going to do now is let's think about this. Do you see how, how the, if you play this string open, what note is it? E. Do you notice that if I go up high enough, it starts all over again? You see that there's another E on that, on that string. You see that? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk through these, okay? If I hit it open, what note is it? What's this? F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Nobody said B sharp, did they? You better not, right? Here's a C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, now stop. Look at, on my guitar, there is double dots right there. And your guitar may have a signal. Yours, I don't know if yours has any on the side. Every guitar, at the, that's the 12th fret, every guitar should have some kind of sign that it's something unique. Okay, unless you have like a classical guitar, some guitars like, they just have, it's just stylish to not have the dots, but most guitars have them. What this means is this is where it starts all over, okay? Because when I play this note, oh, when, the, when I play the string open, what, what string is it? E. And when I go up to the 12th fret or those double dots, what does it become again? E. That's called an octave, if you care about the musical term for it, an octave. An octave means there is a note that's low with, this, with the same name as a note that's high. Okay, so listen to these. Just one's a low E and one's a high E. Now look at the second string. If you play the second string open, what is it? What, what is the note? A. Write A on top of that string. What do you think would happen if I went to the 12th fret up here? That's another A. see that. So A, let's go ahead and let's think through all the, the, the note names all the way up to the octave, okay? Second string from the top, open is A, and then first fret is A sharp, then the next one is B, and then C. Oh, I saw that. He says B. I was just waiting for someone. Okay, so yeah, remember B doesn't have sharp, so we go to C. C sharp, E, D sharp, E, F, good, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. Lo and behold, we're back to A, and it happens to be the 12th fret. You see? See how that works? So every single one of these strings, if you go up to the 12th fret, that's where the octave is. That's where it starts all over, okay? So if this is the first string, what is it open? open, or the top string, the top string is E, and if I go up to the 12th fret, what is it? E. And if I go up one higher than 12th fret, what do you think it is? F. F. 
So it actually keeps going, F sharp, G, and there it goes. Okay, this is really important for you to understand because we're gonna learn something called bar chords. Let's see how much time we have. We have like seven minutes, so I'm gonna try to get like an introduction to this, and next week we can dive deep into it. Listen to this, ready? Okay, these are called bar chords. Now look at my pointer finger. You see how it's barred? Okay, it's a real rock kind of rock sound, and there is another song that was that uses bar chords. Okay, so you can get a whole bunch of interesting kind of rock sounds with bar chords, but you've got to know right off the bat, it will require a a lot of patience, weeks of patience, because these will feel so uncomfortable. And what happens when you first start, watch this. A bar chord is kind of like a formation that can slide, okay? Now this, say, uh, did you say something? Uh, yeah, the, uh, okay, so this uh, finger, and then these two fingers, right? You're not doing anything with I'm doing, all fingers are being used, except for my thumb, yeah. Okay, so I'll show you in a second. Don't worry about it, but I just wanna show you a concept real quick. So, you see, it's like a formation, like this. And I'll show you exactly what to do, but basically what you wanna do eventually is learn to slide it, and then press down. Slide it, press down. But when you try it, it's not gonna happen that way. When you play it like this, and then you slide, it's gonna go like, your fingers are gonna go everywhere, and then you're gonna to have to reset everything. That's just the way that it goes, okay? Because I was there, and I know. And it will hurt your hand, the muscles. If you were to peel your skin off, there is muscles all over the place, and your muscles are gonna be cramping. Uh, but over time, we'll get it down, okay? So now here's how it works. Before we move on and, and start working on this, watch this, ready? This formation of bar chord is the one I'm gonna teach you first. And as you move around, you got to know what chord name it is, okay? And the way that you know what chord na name it is, is if you look at your pointer finger and ask yourself, what note am I hitting on the top string? That will tell you what chord it is. So if I play the bar chord here, what chord do you think that that is? F. It's an F chord, okay? And if I go here, what do you think it is? G. G. A sharp, and if I go down here, A, F. See, so that's how that's how that works, okay? And there are some chords that you cannot play without a bar chord. You can't actually, you can't play. You see, these are these are what we call open chords. See, because we actually have some open strings down here, right? You see, like all the chords that we've been learning so far, they're called open chords, but these are called bar chords. So let's go ahead and go to the next page, page nine. I do not want you to work on page 10 yet. All right, just page nine and next week we'll, we'll, we'll talk about page 10. You can get very goofed up. All right, so I'm using a new, a new relatively new computer and the word, when I transfer it into the new version of Word, it just seems like it, these numbers are a little bit off-centered. Can you see that? So I apologize for that. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at the left column right now. And this is an E major chord. Can you play an E major chord? And for you two that are new to the class, I'll show you how to read these chords at the end of class, okay? I'll take a couple minutes and show you. E major. Now, what we're gonna do, uh, you see that we're, we're pressing down three strings, right? But how many strings are we actually strumming? Six. So there are six, we're, there are six strings being strung, okay? So the first note that we're hitting is basically as if we had our, our finger here, right? It's like we put our finger right there. Now on this, on this next string, there's our finger, 
Here's the next string, there's her finger. Here's the next string, there's her finger. And the last two, it's like we had our pointer finger like kind of like up here. Now, if I wanted to take that E chord and I wanted to raise every string up a half step, listen very carefully. If I want to raise all six notes that I'm playing on my E chord up a half step, I could go like this with my E and I could scoot it up a half step. But did that raise all the strings up a half, up a half step? No, it didn't change that top one at all and it didn't change the bottom one at all. So I can do it by barring my finger kind of like that. And if I do that, I basically took my E chord and I moved every single string up, how far? A half step. Now, there's an easier way to do it than with two hands like this. Right? We could actually just kind of like re reformulate it and basically look like that. So if you look at your chart now on the left side, you see the F, that shows you how to do it. Who's, who's just strum that right there? Yep, sounds good. And I think, was it you? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. Okay, so this is an F. Okay? Now, if you held that for very long, your, your, your pointer finger is going to start cramping and, and it's going to take a little bit getting used to. Now, if this is an F, what do you think would happen if we moved it up a half step? It would be an F sharp. Okay. If we go up another half step, what do you think it would be? G, G sharp. And I'm basically following these notes right there on that string, page eight. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to call that form. Okay, the way that you're holding your, your, your bar chord there, I will call it E major form. I'm gonna call it an E major form bar chord. And why am I gonna call it an E major form bar chord? Because it kind of looks like I'm moving an E major chord around. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna teach you four different forms of bar chords. And I'm going to give the name of the form of each bar chord. I'm going to name it after the chord that it looks like we're actually moving around. Does that make sense? Okay, now, if this is an F, and that, it, what form is that? E major. e major form. Now, I can play a bar chord like this. Ready? What form do you think that is? It is, right? So if I scooted that back until the, my bar fell off, what chord is that? It's an E minor. So this is an E minor, and I move, if I moved an E minor up a half step, I would play it like that. What chord do you think that would be? F, F minor. It's an F minor. It's, it's, it's good. And so every time that I move this around, F sharp minor, G minor, G sharp minor, okay? So there are two forms that we learned today. We learned a bar chord that looks like I'm moving an E around. There's an E. If I scoot a bar chord all the way down till the bar falls off, I ask myself, what chord is that? And that's how I know what form that bar chord is. Okay? Now look at this chord right here. I can know what form that is if I scoot it all the way down until the bar falls off. And what chord do I have left? Even though I'm using the wrong fingers for it, that's, that's what's happening, right? Okay? So if I take a major chord, like E major, and I start scooting it around as a bar chord, what kind of chord is it going to be? Is it going to be major or minor? It's going to be major. 
Now if I take a minor chord, like E minor, and I turn it into a bar chord and I start moving it around, what kind of chord is it going to make? It will make a minor. And minors are sad. They sound sad. Listen to this. See that? So if I scoot that all the way down, it's an E minor, right? That's why as I, as I move it around, it's sounding sad, okay? Now when I take this major chord and I move it around, it's gonna sound happy. Major chords are happy, minor chords are sad. So if we go back to the chord chart, on page one, uh, two, the left column, is the major chord column, right? They're all gonna be happy. The right column is the minor chord column and they're all gonna be set, right? All right? And so now you can kinda start to understand what's happening with these bar chords a little bit, you understand? Okay, I'll give you a little preview of next week in case you feel really ambitious this week. There are two other forms, if you go to page 10, Two other forms of bar chords, and that's it. I'm just teaching you four. What are the other forms of bar chords? A form, a major form, and a minor form. Now listen, this is very important. With the E major form and the E minor form, what string to you, do you look at to figure out what chord it is? The top string, the E string. If you're doing a bar chord in A major form or A minor form, you have to look to the, the second string from the top. Whatever note you're hitting on the second string from the top, that's what, what chord it is. Okay, if that went over your head, it's okay, because we're gonna be reviewing it next week, and that, this is how it works. Usually what I'll do is I'll get one week, I'll just like venture off into something new and it'll be like blowing your, it'll like hurt your head. And the next week we do like a quick review and then we start kind of going a little deeper and then all of a sudden it starts to click. So be, be super patient with yourself because that's the way we got to do it. Because we're not just messing around with super, super simple stuff all the time. We're actually getting into, you know, some challenging stuff. So you've got to expect that when you first hear it, it's going to be a little hard to understand. But then we review it and we review it and we re review it. That's the way it's going to be when we talk about music theory. It's the most important thing you will ever learn about music. Okay? But it will be a little bit challenging at first. It'll take you a couple of weeks to get it down. So next week we might venture into it. We'll do a little bit more bar chords and then we might venture into the music theory. Don't miss next week, okay? Cool. There's Renata and Ahava. So um, guys, if you, ever, if you ever have to um, have any questions about the PDF or the video or anything, Renata is the one that you'll be talking to through the email, okay? So, uh, you want to get to know her a little bit, okay? Cool. So have, have a great week, you guys. And you had something to say? Just want to make sure everybody signed the clipboard. So if you came in late, you didn't get a chance to do that. Make sure that you signed the Cool. All right. Good job, guys. See? You. And then for the two new people, I'll talk to you guys up here real quick, okay? Yeah, right. I know. Oh, folks, folks. Thank you. Everybody, real quick. This is really important to get. The capo. It's like 15 bucks. You want to go buy this. You can get it off Amazon Prime or you can get it off uh, Guitar Center, but get one like this. Sim a simple one. Probably don't pay any more than 15, 20 bucks. Okay? Don't let them sell you the $60 one because that's going to be a total ripoff. So.